Oh yeah, today's video is gonna get real interesting again. All right, welcome back to the channel, guys. In today's video, we are back in the mountains, and today we have a very, very special little Altaport. Yes, we are at Altaport 007, which kind of fits to this channel, which is called 001, which is, by the way, not associated to James Bond. The 007 is. All right, so as you can see, we are in the French mountains today. We are not in the Alpine mountains, but we are in the Pyrenees which lies like between Spain and France we're on the French side and you know in the recent past of this channel we checked out a lot of these little outer ports that there are in France there are actually a lot of them you know we have Courchevel we have Megev or however these names are all pronounced these are also outer ports and they are very famous because of their very very steep runway to be honest this is one of the most unknown outer ports in France but this runway even seems to be a little bit steeper than Courchevel's runway which is obviously a lot more famous actually this runway is only 400 to 500 meters long that is not long at all actually yeah 400 meters is probably the shortest that you can get with an airport this might just be one of the shortest paved runways now what does this say something in french i don't know what the hell is this picture i do not know this is actually a ski resort in the winter obviously so you can see there are some houses yeah whatever another thing that's interesting about this alta port is obviously its name as you can see it has the 007 in it and that is actually actually for a reason. Actually, a James Bond film was filmed here. They filmed Tomorrow Never Dies here, which was released in 1997. It's a little old. I'm gonna more or less legally show you the intro of that movie, or at least some pictures of it. As you can see here, the movie begins with a scene at this very airport. That is pretty damn cool. Now, this might be just a little bit unrealistic. I don't think you can operate these fighter jets at this runway, but we can try that out, right? We can do some practical tests if these fighter jets would even at all be able to operate here in the first place. But yeah, this is a very interesting movie. To be honest, I never watched it. I've never been that big of a fan of James Bond, but this movie seems to be very interesting nonetheless. Now, ever since that movie was shot here, they named it Altaport 001, which I guess is a very nice name. The other name for it is Pay... I do not know. Now let's take a look at the airport facilities. As you can see, we have a little hangar with uh, this Robin plane in here and a Piper Cub. We have a little bit of space here on the ramp. Pretty nice, I guess. Here we have some kind of pizza oven if you want to cook a pizza here. I do not know. Yeah, not too much goes on at this airport. Now we are spawned into the X Cub. Now this plane is a stole plane, which means that it doesn't need a runway like at all, really. This plane can practice practically fly at a helipad, right? That's maybe a little bit exaggerated, but this plane will not need the whole runway of this. It was made for short little airstrips, so it shouldn't have any issues operating here. But damn, that steepness of the runway, that is actually worrying me a little bit, but I don't know. I'm pretty sure that landings here are not soft. All right, there we go. That was a pretty nice takeoff. I mean, yeah, after all, the x it can fly anywhere. So that worked out really well, but genuinely, this might just be one of the biggest challenges we've had on this channel. I mean, I think we once tried operating planes on a helipad, which didn't really work that well, but okay, I guess. Let's try a plane that is probably not certified to operate on short runways like this. It needs a longer one, especially for takeoff. That is, of course, the Cirrus Jet. The Cirrus Jet, actually, it doesn't have a lot of power, so it needs a longer runway to at least take off, but yeah, whatever. Talking about certification, I'm very, very sure that you're gonna have to have some kind of mountain wheeling license next to your normal pilot license. You also have to have that kind of license at Alta ports like Rochevel or all the other French one in the Alps, pretty much. I don't know, it's just France. It's not Switzerland or Austria. They don't really have runways like this. Yeah, in general, aviation is quite big over there in France. They don't only have baguette which is interesting. That steepness of the runway, that does help us stop for the landing. I gotta say that. All right, not bad. Jesus Christ, that bank. How did they manage to even pave this runway at all? <laughs> Jesus. Okay, turns out stopping is not that much of an issue either. You know, the steepness of the runway, it does really help. So I'm actually kind of confident that planes might actually be able to fly here. And with planes, I mean planes bigger than this one even. So let's do that. Let's try the Dornier here. This plane actually flies to the most dangerous airport in the world, and that is Lukla. I think everyone should know that airport already. 
let's see if it can fly here as well. This might genuinely be a little bit more challenging than Lukla, I feel. I mean, at least Lukla has a longer runway than this one. But let's see. This is also quite a narrow runway, so big planes won't even fit on this one. Jesus. Also, the Dornier is obviously perfectly able to fly here. I mean, it's also just a stall plane that is able to fly at short runways. So no worries. So let's fly a plane that might just not be exactly that. Oh yes, let's actually go big already. I feel like it. I don't know. I feel like flying the Junkers U-52. All right, we'll go aboard the Ju-52. As you can see, we are already talking airliners now. Now, uh, the good thing about this one is that it's pretty old. Yeah, this is a very old plane, actually. Meaning that it's also slow. Meaning that it lands at a slow speed and you can land it pretty much anywhere. Wow, I actually haven't noticed that lake down there. This is like quite a beautiful region. Damn, I miss the Alps. I haven't been there in like four months due to the current crisis that we have, obviously. Well, yeah, the Pernays, they also seem pretty fine, I guess. All right, let's land this very, very vintage German plane. I still do not like how the airspeed is measured in kilometers per hour. Just seems something wrong about it. All right, looking good, actually. Not bad. Let's do this. That was a landing. And a stop as well, I guess. Not bad. Yeah, just again, we need engine power in order to actually get up the runway because this is so damn steep. Jesus. Come on. Oh, oh no, don't roll. Ah. Yeah, I don't like working with tail draggers. Jesus. All right, we have officially rolled off the runway. Let's just ignore that one. The landing itself, it was pretty damn successful, wasn't it? Not very bad. I'm actually confident that this runway, it is going to be able to operate some planes here. That was actually a pretty nice landing. And pretty nice stop. Honestly, I shouldn't even have used the brakes. Just the sheer steepness of the runway would have braked the aircraft already, so that's good. Very, very impressive. Let's move on. What should we try? Should we try some kind of airliner now? Some kind of jet plane. Let's start with a smaller one. Let's try the Bombardier Challenger 300, which is a pretty nice private jet. I like that one a lot. In general, I like Bombardier planes. I might just also like them a little bit more than Airbus or Boeing planes, honestly. Let's see if I'm going to like this plane even after this landing. I'm expecting this landing to be like genuinely successful now, so don't let me down. I think this plane should be able to stop here. By the way, I forgot to tell you about the elevation of this field. This is at quite a high elevation, as you can see. We're flying at around 6,500 feet, which is gonna be like around 2,000 meters of altitude. The elevation is pretty damn challenging here. Let me tell you, a high elevation doesn't make an airport easier. It is definitely the other way around. Now let's go ahead and land this plane. Oh my goodness. Oh, oh, please stop. Oh no. All right, that was actually an overrun already. I hate this plane now, huh? Yeah, the thing is, the Challenger 300, it actually needs quite a long runway for its size. That really didn't work out, did it? All right, yeah, that was a hard landing as well. You gotta say that. I mean, honestly, in real life, if a landing was this bad, the landing gear would have probably fallen apart anyway. So that would have theoretically worked, right? Ah, uh, but this was quite a big failure, though. All right, uh, maybe let's try some kind of airliner now. Let's try the CRJ-200. Yeah, a jet airliner. Let's see if that one can take off out of here. Probably not, but, you know, it's worth a try. All right, let's actually use the whole runway or perhaps the whole airport. All right, full power. Let's release the brakes. Let's Let's see, this might work out. Come on, let's build some speed. This has to work. All right, it didn't work. <laughs> That's pretty disappointing. You know, the CRJ200, as nice as it is, actually, it isn't very nice, also from the passenger side. CRJ stands for Crappy Regional Jet. I have already talked about this one. It does need quite a long runway. It doesn't have a very good performance. The plane that has a pretty good performance is the 737, so let's try that one. Maybe we will have luck this time around. I think with the 737, Seven will actually run into some issues to properly even land on the runway and not on the grass next to it. Because this is actually pretty damn narrow. But let's do this. All right, we'll come over to the 737. This is KLM. I cannot recreate a proper Dutch accent, so we're not going to try that one. Apparently, KLM now serves the airport of James Bond, whatever, in the Pyrenees. I mean, the cool thing about this is that you can definitely fly to your ski resort directly. You don't even have to take some kind of taxi or anything, really. You can just walk up to your ski resort from your airport. That's pretty nice. Thing is, though, that you're gonna have to make some kind of safe landing in the first place. That's quite a challenge here. All right, let's do this now. Okay, the landing gear is definitely broken now, but the plane itself 
isn't really. That was actually not bad. Yeah, now I understand the sheer small size of this airport. I mean, you can barely even fit a 737 on this ramp, and the 737 isn't the biggest plane at all. <laughs> now, that was not really that much of a landing, but more of a crash landing, and actually it was not that required in order to stop. This was pretty damn successful. This was actually pretty good. Yeah, the 737, it has a good stopping performance. Actually, I wanted to get the 757 for this flight simulator for the video, but I forgot. So let's try something like the 777, which will most probably not work. I mean, it doesn't even fit on the runway, and you know, in general, it is like twice as long as the runway itself. Could be worse, I guess. Let's do this. All right, we'll come aboard the 777. We all know that this will not be a successful landing, right? All right, touchdown. Oh my god. Oh, that was hard. And into the parking lot. Oh, no, we're dead. Ah, uh, yeah, now we can actually hear some clapping in the background. That really didn't work out, did it? Actually, our chances of doing a successful landing in the 747-8 are not looking too bad. I mean, they're a lot better than in the 777, I gotta say that. The 777, it needs a longer runway, actually, than this one, I think. The 747 has a pretty good stopping performance, so maybe, just maybe, we'll actually make a successful stop. Even though we're actually now running into the problem of not being able to fit onto the runway. <laughs> All right, looking good though. Hard landing though. Oh, Jesus Christ. Maybe we can stop. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, yes, this worked. All right, see, that worked out very, very well. No worries at all. I mean, by FAA rules, this would have been a genuine crash landing because we didn't necessarily touch down on the runway, but kind of before it. But it turns out you could operate a 747 here if you expanded the runway a little bit here. I think this would be a very successful commercial airport. There we go, that was a nice landing. You are going to run into the problem of not being able to park your aircraft here, because, well, there's no space here, pretty much. You would genuinely block the runway by just parking here. But I mean, this could kind of work, right? Yeah, again, the 747 has blown us away with its stopping capabilities. So, yes, as it turns out, Altaport 007, it might just be the most dangerous airport in Europe. I think this is genuinely more dangerous than all the other Altaports in France, you know, just because of the sheer steepness of this runway, Jesus Christ. But can you take off from the other side, which is what we're doing right now, you know, uphill? <laughs> actually, not really. Oh no. Get okay, this actually kind of worked though. But yeah, guys, thank you for watching today's video, and I'll see you tomorrow, as always. Good night.